Hello, and welcome to installing the Northwind sample database for SQL Server 2016 or other versions of SQL Server. It's not particularly difficult, but first we have to go download them. The download link I will leave in the information section down below this video. It is basically from Microsoft's download site and pretty easy to find. It's right here. All you have to do is just click download. It'll only take a couple seconds because it's not a very big file. And you will end up downloading this file right here, a little MSI package. Now remember, this is for SQL Server 2000, so these are older databases. But Northwind's a nice, simple little database that makes it easy to test uh, straight SQL Server functionality. Let's go ahead and double click on that MSI we downloaded. All right, here we are, SQL Server 2000 sample database scripts, ready to go. Click Next. You'll need to read and agree to the terms as usual. I agree, otherwise we wouldn't have much of an install now, would we? Click Next. And we don't need to really change where it installs or anything. It's going to install it on the C drive, uh, which is weird, but that's okay. Uh, if you've been using modern Windows, we're used to it not installing in places like this. But remember, this is from SQL Server 2000, and it's now 2017. So this is not exactly new database scripts, is it? Click Next. Click Next. Go ahead and say yes if you are asked for admin rights. That's it. Click Close. So now those databases are installed on the C drive, let's open up File Explorer and find them. So click on File Explorer down here in our taskbar. Here she is. And we go click on Local Disk C. And you should see a directory now, SQL Server 2000 Sample Databases. Yay! Double click on that directory. And we are going to use the script. We are not I repeat, not going to attach the database files, the MDF and LDF. Many people have significant issues doing that because these are from the year 2000. Eh? So it's a much older database format and SQL Server will complain incessantly about that. So we are going to use the script. So we go look at instnwind.sql, double click on that. It's going to ask you, maybe, what you wish to use to open this file if you have never done this before. So we have already installed SQL Server Management Studio in our little set here. So we're just going to make sure that's selected. And always use this app to open SQL files. Seems like a reasonable thing to me. We'll go ahead and select that checkbox. Again, if your company doesn't do that, feel free to choose what you wish. In our case, though, SQL Server Management Studio Always use this app to open SQL files. Click OK. This will open up Management Studio. It'll take a little bit. If this is your first time opening Management Studio, it will definitely take a little bit of time. And here we are in Management Studio. So we're going to need to connect up to our SQL Server. My SQL Server is on this local machine, Doniger, and we're going to use Windows Authentication to connect up. Looks good. Click Connect. And you'll need to connect again. I know this sounds odd, but you'll need to connect again because one of the connections was for Object Explorer, the other connection was for actually connecting up to run the script. If you get that again, just click Connect again, and you should be good. So, you now have the script that is going to be run to install Northwind. We need to make one quick change, and I will explain what this change is. If you scroll down a little bit in this file that you downloaded from Microsoft, you will see two lines right around the 20-something point. These two lines are execute sp underscore db option. These have been removed in modern SQL Server. There isn't such a thing anymore. We now use alter database. 
So what we want to do is we want to comment out both of those lines. So just highlight the whole section here, execute SPDB option, both of them and the go. And now you need to comment those out. And we can do that really easily by going up here to this little guy right there. You can see him in the menu. Now you can just use the keyboard shortcut, Control K, Control C, but we're just gonna click on that button. And that will comment it out. Now, since this is actually a database, it does not need to be fully logged. Let's go ahead and change it to simple log mode because that seems reasonable for a demo. And that's basically what truncate log on checkpoint does anyway. So let's add that. So we just enter a couple times there and type in alter database Northwind. Do not put apostrophes around that, by the way. Just leave it like that. Enter set recovery simple semicolon. Enter and a go. And what that'll do is that'll make sure that Northwind, the sample database, is set to a mode that does not have full logging. Uh, it is normal in many cases to set a demo database to that. This should work fine, and it will prevent us from having any errors when this script runs. Do not save your script yet. You don't want to change the default script until you know that it works. But in order to find out if it works, let's run it. Click Execute or hit F5. And you should see commands completed successfully. Looks like our script worked. Let's verify that it actually installed Northwind, however. Go over to your little folder list over here, expand databases, and you should now see Northwind. You may have other databases there too, but what we're interested in is Northwind. Let's make sure that recovery mode was set correctly. Right click on Northwind, click properties. It'll bring up your database properties box so far looking good. Click options. And you should see recovery model is simple. Looks good. Click cancel. Always click cancel. If you haven't made changes, do not click OK. If you're someone like me, that's Mr. Clicky. It is not a good idea to be in the habit of clicking OK because you might inadvertently make a change and not realize it. Always click cancel. If you haven't made any changes, saves you from trouble later on. So we'll click cancel. Let's go and do a query against Northwind and see what happens. Click new query. Say use Northwind. Put a semicolon at the end because SQL statements, modern SQL statements should be ended with a semicolon. Enter and go. Enter, enter. And now we just say select asterisk. Enter from products, semicolon, and go. About as simple a query as we can get, but that should be good to find out whether things work. Products is just a table in Northwind. F5 it. And you should see data come back. Looks like in install was successful. All right. You can go ahead and close your management studio now. And you don't need to save any of the files, but if you do want to save your Northwind installer file, feel free. I'm not going to do it. I don't need to do it here. But if you do want to save that and put it in a different place, so you don't have to retype that alter statement. It's fine. Honestly, you don't really have much problem if those SPDB option things run. It won't cause an issue as long as you're running the script. But like I said, if you try and restore this from a backup or you try and attach the database, SQL Server is going to give you a guff over that. So if you're just using the script and you get a couple errors there, not a big problem. So I'll leave that one to you. I'm not going to save anything in my case. So I'm going to and close. And thank you very much. I hope to see you again. Please subscribe if you enjoy.